We will be calculating how economists estimate a country's output and income for a year. The importance of these figures will be discussed, as well as the differences between the various ways that we can measure income. Lastly, we will discuss how we can adjust the figures that we have calculated for inflation effects and analyze some of the issues associated with the various accounts. National income accounting does for the economy what private accounting would do for an individual household or business. The Bureau of Economic Analysis, an agency of the Department of Commerce, compiles the data and reports it in national income and product accounts. This information is used by economists and policymakers in formulating decisions for the best interest of the nation. The primary measure of the economy's performance as a whole is its aggregate output. This is most commonly calculated as gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP is a monetary measure in that everything is valued in dollars. All goods and services produced must be converted into dollar values for GDP to work. To avoid multiple counting of goods, GDP includes only the market value of final goods and ignores intermediate goods, which are goods either purchased for resale or for further processing into final goods. GDP could also avoid multiple counting by counting only the value added at each stage. Value added is the market value of a firm's output less the value of the inputs that the firm purchased from others. This table illustrates the value added in a five-stage production process. The value added is calculated as the difference between the sales value of the materials and the value of the good at the previous production stage value. Using this method will avoid multiple counting. Non-production transactions must be excluded from GDP since they have nothing to do with the production of final goods. There are two types, purely financial transactions and second-hand sales. Purely financial transactions include such items as public transfer payments like Social Security, private transfer payments, Christmas gifts, and stock market transactions. Second-hand sales contribute nothing to current production, so they are ignored in calculating GDP. GDP can be viewed from two different perspectives. The income approach looks at GDP in terms of the income derived or created from producing goods and services. The expenditures approach measures GDP as the sum of all of the money spent in buying the output. In theory, either method should yield equal results. The expenditures and income approaches are two different ways to look at the same thing. You could look at a quarter from the head side or the tail side, but it is still worth the same amount. This is the same as the expenditures and income approaches for calculating GDP. Here the two approaches to measuring GDP are illustrated. On the left, the expenditures approach measures GDP as the sum of four items. One, consumption by households. 2. Investment by businesses, 3. Government purchases, and 4. Expenditures by foreigners. On the right, the income approach uses different inputs. 1. Wages, 2. Rents, 3. Interest, 4. Profits, and 5. Statistical adjustments. Each of these items will be further discussed next. Personal consumption expenditures, indicated by a C notation, covers all expenditures by households on goods and services during a year. In any given year, approximately 10% of those expenditures are for durable consumer goods, which are defined as having a life of three years or more. Another 30% go to non-durable goods, such as food, clothing, and gasoline. The other 60% are for services leading to the U.S. economy, frequently being referred to as a service economy. The second component of the expenditures approach is gross private investment, which includes all final purchases of machinery, equipment, and tools by businesses, all construction, and changes in inventories. All of these items represent ways businesses invest in themselves. Construction also includes residential construction, because homes could be rented to produce income. When gross investment exceeds depreciation during a year, net investment occurs. This net investment expands the stock of private capital from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, allowing the economy's production capacity to expand, all other things equal. The last two components of the expenditures approach are government purchases and net exports. Government purchases are officially labeled Government Consumption Expenditures and Gross Investment.
It includes expenditures for goods and services that the government uses in providing public services and expenditures for publicly owned capital, such as for schools or roads. It excludes government transfer payments, such as Social Security, because it merely transfers government receipts to certain households and does not generate any sort of production. Net exports are calculated by subtracting the value of imported goods from the value of exported goods. Adding up all four components provides a measure of GDP, a measure of the market value of a specific year's total output. This approach allocates expenditures as income to those responsible for producing the output. The major component is national income, which is made up of employee compensation, rents, interest, proprietor's income, corporate profits, and taxes on production and imports. The largest share is employee compensation, which includes wages and salaries paid by both businesses and government, as well as supplements such as benefits paid by employers on behalf of employees. Under the income approach, all expenditures on final goods and services flow as income to either private citizens or the government. To move from national income to GDP, several adjustments must be made. The first adjustment is for net foreign factor income. This is income Americans gain from supplying resources abroad, which would be taken out, and then income that foreigners gain from supplying resources to the U.S. would be added. The next adjustment comes from what is called a statistical discrepancy, which basically is just a balancing amount. The final adjustment factor is the useful life of private capital equipment that extends well beyond the year in which they were produced. The cost of the equipment must be allocated over its useful life. The other national accounts provide useful information about the economy's performance. NDP is GDP less consumption of fixed capital. National income is NDP less the statistical discrepancy and plus the net foreign factor income. Personal income includes all income received, regardless of whether it is earned or unearned. Finally, disposable income is PI less personal taxes. These tables illustrate the relationship between GDP, NDP, NI, PI, and DI in the United States for 2012. Here is the updated circular flow that was introduced in a much simpler form in a previous chapter. This table calculates GDP for 2012 in the United States by both the expenditures approach and the income approaches. Note that both methods come to the same conclusion for the year. In this table, comparing GDPs for selected nations, the United States, Japan, and China have the world's highest GDP. Note that all data have been converted to U.S. dollars via international exchange rates. GDP measures production at current dollar values, which creates problems because the value of a dollar changes over time. One hundred years ago, the purchasing power of one dollar was much different than it is today. To get around that problem, there are two different GDPs. Nominal GDP is based upon the prices that were in effect when the output was produced. A GDP that has been deflated or inflated to reflect changes in price levels is referred to as real GDP. In order to calculate real GDP, a base year must be selected and then the current year's prices adjusted accordingly. This is the formula used to calculate real GDP. We use a price index that is equal to the price of a collection of goods and services in the specific year divided by the price for the same goods and services in a base year multiplied by 100. Nominal GDP is then divided by the price index in hundredths to determine real GDP. In this table, nominal GDP and real GDP are calculated based upon the formula. Years 1 to 3 have been calculated. Complete the table for years 4 and 5. While GDP is a reasonably accurate and highly useful measure of how the economy is performing, it does have several shortcomings. Certain productive activities occur outside of any market and therefore are not measured in the traditional way. The value of leisure time, weekends, holidays, etc. is also not included, but they certainly add value due to the added satisfaction they provide to workers. GDP fails to capture the full value of improvements in product quality. Let's face it, a $200 cell phone purchased today is of very different quality than a cell phone that cost $200 just a decade ago. 
There is also a huge underground economy, mainly comprised of illegal activities, that produces income that is not measured through traditional GDP methods. Included in this underground economy are legal activities that provide income that the recipients do not wish to report to the IRS and pay taxes on. Environmental issues and non-economic sources of well-being are also problematic in that GDP does not really have a way to accurately value and report the issues. This table shows the underground economy as a percentage of GDP in several nations. Three factors that help explain the variation in size are 1. The extent and complexity of regulation 2. The type and degree of taxation and 3. The effectiveness of law enforcement the Bureau of Economic Analysis, an agency of the Department of Commerce, is responsible for compiling the NIPA tables. The BEA gets its data from a variety of sources. The consumption data comes from four primary sources, three of which are provided by the Census Bureau. The Retail Trade Survey gathers sales data from a sample of 22,000 firms. The Survey of Manufacturers collects information on shipments of consumer goods from 50,000 establishments and the service survey collects sales data from 30,000 service businesses. The BEA also collects information from a variety of industry trade sources. Data, the BEA looks at the consumption sources as well as the Housing Start Survey and Housing Sales Survey produced by the Census Bureau. The data for government purchases comes from the Office of Personnel Management, OPM, which collects data on wages and benefits of both public and private sectors, and the Construction Survey and the Census Bureau's Survey of Government Finance, which provide data on government consumption and investment expenditures. The net exports data comes from U.S. Customs Service reports and the BEA surveys of domestic exporters and importers of services.